and in charge of one of London's top universities is urging the government to rethink its policy on overseas students. The principal at King's College fears thousands of international students who are worth £10 billion to the wider economy could be put off coming here because of the government's crackdown on visas. Here's our education reporter, Mark Ashdown. Ganesh has felt the impact of visa changes. He came here from Nepal in 2009, but when his university was sanctioned, he and hundreds of others lost everything. You have spent your time, you have spent your money, you have spent your commitment after so many years, and then all of a sudden, university gets suspended, you never know, and in some cases, you get 60 days notice to find another university or have to leave the country. He was left thousands of pounds out of pocket and had to leave before reapplying. This is where the clash between immigration and higher education began. In 2012, London Metropolitan University was banned from sponsoring non-EU, so-called overseas, students. The UK border agency felt the university wasn't doing enough to stop illegal immigration by carrying out the proper checks on students. It's got its license back now, but this incident sparked a government crackdown, which is still having a huge effect on the £10 billion overseas student market. First, there was the scandal over the crucial English language test students have to pass. Scores of colleges were allegedly cheating. So far, 84 have had their licences for overseas students revoked, at least half in London. Thousands of overseas students have struggled with tough changes to visas. Students must now have more money in their bank account. Part-time working during study is more restricted, and the post-study working visa has been scrapped. It all adds up to trouble, according to one college principal. Edward Byrne ran an Australian university five years ago during a similar immigration crackdown. He says it was heavy-handed and led to a dramatic drop in student numbers and university income. I believe the UK government wants to prevent students coming for immigration and not education. Uh, and I think they have inadvertently overshot. Uh, and I would urge them to look very closely at the Australian experience uh, where, a conservative, where, where a Labour government uh, made uh, uh, exactly uh, the same uh, set of alterations with very deleterious effects on students coming for education uh, and learn from it. Students are applying their own pressure. A National Day of Walkout is planned in the coming months in support of overseas students. It just feels like we're purely wanted because of our money um, and there's not nothing else, no other value is seen of us being in the UK. It's just kind of, okay, come here, give us our money, go to university and then just go. It just feels like constant being policed and just message after message that you're unwelcome, you're unwanted. The Home Office told us overseas student figures are up 17% since 2010. They say they'll keep tackling abuse in the immigration system while continuing to attract the brightest and best students in the world. Whenever I talk to my friends, they say that I don't want to be there in Britain. It's not good for students. It's, it's not helping at all. There are frequent changes in rules and regulation. You never know whether the university or the colleges that you are studying will last longer or not. And the policy is not favourable to international students. But they're worth billions of pounds a year. London boasts top universities in a top city. Protecting that reputation is vital. Mark Ashdown, BBC London News.